know if there's any new people in here since I've been here. If you don't recognize me, raise your hand. <laughs> All right, we got a few people. All right. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Manny Fernandez. I'm the uh, pastor of Eagle River Baptist Church. We just started this church last year uh, by faith. And uh, what you're going to see today is what God has done for us in, in just that one year. Uh, God is good. Amen. And so um, I'm going to uh, show this video here, and um, I'll just let it explain itself and come back up and talk a little bit more. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pastor Fernandez. And I'm Marla Fernandez. And we're here to show you what God is doing for us here in Eagle River, Alaska. There's a church in the valley by the wild woods, no lovelier place in the day. No spot is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the veil. Oh, come, 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 the church by the wild single vanity. All right, will you come on up here? Let's go on upstairs really quick before we get into the main auditorium. As you'll see, we have several classrooms. This particular space I'm going to be putting in a cabinet that can lock so we can have some uh, cleaning supplies that we can hold up here. Here, we're going to be having a, uh, this room particularly right now is being used as our prayer, our prayer room. Wednesday night we have what's called the upper room prayer service. And uh, we sit here and we pray. Uh, we're going through Andrew Murray's book, With Christ in the School of Prayer by Andrew Murray. And uh, we, we come here to pray for the things that we need from God. Now we know that prayer works. Here, we're going to be turning this room into a prophet's chamber. Uh, and then using another room for the, for the upper room later. This room, we're going to be turning it into a rest room for the upper 
upstairs for the profit chamber. It's going to have a shower in here and uh, a new sink and vanity, as well as uh, this nice spacious area and uh, a spot here for the closet. We want to make this a comfortable place for missionaries to come through. As you can see, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We had a leak, but the leak has been restored and uh, fixed. So now they have to try to fix the ceiling, but they can't do that without testing the ceiling first for asbestos and for lead. Uh, and so we're waiting for that. Here we have another classroom. Currently we're using it as a storage facility. We're doing this because, again, we're renovating the property. Another classroom right here, suitable for children. Over here, we have the pastor's office. Again, we'll be painting this office and uh, re moving things around a little bit to make it a little bit more comfortable. But there is a uh, spot here where we could shoot uh, videos. When we get it hooked up, we can, we can do live streaming down here. It's set up that way. This used to be an old movie theater. And this is where they would have the, the movie reel playing on that screen there. Uh, it's, it's a good setup for us to be able to have church. Over here is, the, is our other storage room. As you can see, it's very spacious, but we have it packed with things right now. Uh, we have so many things that we have to store. We just don't have a lot of room. But this room has, uh, was the flower room. Right now, it's just our storage room. You can see we have a whole team full of puppets that we'll be using for the kids over there. We actually have a lot of puppets uh, in there. We have tons of uh, different hymn, hymn books. Uh, I think about four different hymn books in here uh, that we can use and we could switch out from season to season and uh, as well as games and activities for the kids. Let me go this way again. Let's go downstairs. Marlo will be holding on to these handrails. <laughs> We've got more handrails down, down below uh, in the basement, and I'm hoping to be able to put some more on here. But as you can see, this is the main auditorium. And this auditorium, you can see probably about 50 people. Uh, we have uh, tonight, in fact, is our Sunday night, and tonight is what we call at the altar prayer meeting. We come in here, and we're going through Ian Bounds' book, Prayer and Praying Men, Sunday night. And as we go through that, uh, we uh, learn more about prayer, but we also have our prayer list, and we go to the altar, and we pray to God to meet our needs. Uh, Sunday morning is our uh, Sunday school, as well as our regular service. As you can see, the auditorium is very spacious. Now, come with me over here. I'd like to show you uh, this little area. These speakers are going to be moved. I'm going to be building a shelf on both corners for these two speakers. And we're going to be putting them up on the shelf and tying them to those uh, anchors so that they're out of the way. We plan on trying to move these pianos and these organs over just a little bit and then putting them in a little bit to give a little bit more room uh, here. We do need a baptistry and we're hoping that we can either put the baptistry over here or we could do something with getting a portable one that we can bring in here and store. 
uh, there's some room in here where we can have a baptistry. But the problem is, is that we would, uh, it, it would be out of the way of the church. And so we're hoping to be able to actually put it in the auditorium if we can. Now, uh, this is right now just a little bit of a storage area, but this is where the wheelchair ramp is. And we're going to try to uh, fix it to where it'll have the handrails uh, as well. And then we're actually going to be putting in that other door. We're going to be putting another handicap uh, ramp to where uh, they could actually use that one if they need it. Uh, and, and we're hoping to not use this side as much. Uh, only because during the winter time, the landscape changes over here. Um, where right now you see just a nice parking lot, but during the winter time, there's a lot of snow. And, uh, and so this is our main entrance area out front here that we're trying to, to keep it the main entrance. Um, and uh, this particular area is, I would personally, I would rather people coming through that side than through here if I could help it. Uh, come on in. As you can see, God has given us a great opportunity here. We have prayed, we started this church, Eagle River Baptist Church, May 7th, 2023. And less than a year later, God has answered our prayers. God has given us this great building and money to help with the renovation. If God has placed it on your heart to help us with the renovations, we would be glad and love to have you help us with our project. We want to thank everybody who's been praying for us and supporting us all this time. And we do want to let you know that we do pray for you here and that God answers prayers. If you're praying for something big, and if you're praying for something for a long time, just know that God is listening to you and that God can do great and mighty things through prayer. May God bless you. Thank you. As you can see, God, God's done some great things. Amen. Um, again, so uh, Marla's not here with me today. Uh, that was not my wife. That was just a picture of my wife. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Marla is, uh, she's up north uh, right now trying to take care of things. Actually, it's pretty hard to get away from Alaska. Summer is short, winter is long, and uh, everything is tough, <laughs> amen? Uh, and so um, uh, I, I was blessed to be able to be able to come down here for a, for a couple weeks. Um, I have a meeting in Georgia uh, coming up soon, and um, uh, we're getting renovations done to the church as we speak. Uh, with the contractors and so this was just a, a really good time for me to come down and just close down the church for for a few weeks uh, we can't have anybody in there anyway uh, right now um, the uh, we found out that when the asbestos and lead test did come back I just found out yesterday and um, they there was uh, asbestos and lead in there they're gonna have to do an abatement on that and so uh, it's, we're going to have to be taking away from some of the projects that we initially had that we were going to be doing to pay for that abatement. I haven't gotten any of the estimates yet. I'm, I'm still waiting on that. Um, so we're, uh, we're just praying that uh, all of it will work out, you know, to wh whatever God wants. Amen. Uh, but we are, we are making sure that the, uh, everything is ADA compliant. Uh, only because we want to make sure that when we have guests with wheelchairs and, and handicapped that they're comfortable and that they can come in and, uh, and walk around and use the restrooms and all that stuff, you know. Uh, and so um, we, we had another surprise come up where the, uh, the well uh, gave, it was giving out on us and um, through the circumstances of events uh, we found out and, uh, and that was another $5,400 right there, just down the drain, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we had to buy a whole new well tank uh, and, and um, have it installed. And um, 
So just uh, just a few things that uh, you know happened uh, that were just unexpected. Uh, but again, God is faithful, uh, and God knows what God knows all about it. Uh, he knew when he when he established uh, that that church and that building. When the builders were were building it, he knew that there would be lead and asbestos that they were going to be using, and he knew that he was going to have to provide a way to to take care of it. You know, so God knows all about it. Amen. Uh, I'll just give you a testimony uh, really quick. Um, well, let, let, me just, let me just go through a little bit of an introduction before I go through that. Um, so uh, we started Eagle River Baptist Church uh, May 7th, uh, 2023. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we did it by faith. Uh, Everybody was telling us not to go to Eagle River. Every pastor, every, every missionary that has ever dealt with Eagle River said, don't go to Eagle River, you're not going to be able to start a church there. And I just said, you know, God wants us to start a church in Eagle River. <laughs> uh, and so um, uh, I'm, I'm actually writing a book right now. Um, this will be my seventh book. Uh, but I'm writing a book right now. If I can get away with it, I'm going to call it Of Moose and Men. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, uh, we're, I'm going to try to uh, basically talk about our, our experiences there in Alaska as missionaries and, uh, and, and how God has been faithful to us. You're going to get to hear a lot about that today. Um, in order for me to go through that, I'd like to, I'd like to go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60 with me. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse number 21. And everybody there? All right. Uh, if you're able to, if you could just stand with me really quick. Uh, if, if you're not able to, don't worry about it. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 21 and 22. And here the Bible says, Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word, and I just want to pray that you'll please, for the next few moments, hide me behind the cross and, uh, and help me to convey uh, this uh, encouraging message today to, uh, to every believer. And if there be, be anybody here who does not know Christ as Savior, I pray that they, they would trust Christ today. And if there's somebody watching us on Facebook, dear God, I pray that uh, they, they too would be encouraged and blessed. Lord, and if they're not saved, I pray that you would, you would open up their hearts, Lord, and, and that they might trust you as Savior today. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Uh, <clears throat> the life of a missionary is a life of, of living by faith. A missionary has to learn to get a hold of God and that before he goes into the field. I would encourage any called man of God to follow the Lord's direction in his ministry. However, a man of God must be a man of faith. And living by his faith is sometimes, that's something that you have to just learn. It's not something you acquire overnight. Uh, there's a species of duck in uh, Alaska, I believe it's the harlequin, that uh, when she has her chicks, uh, she brings them through a series of rigorous training exercises in, in a rivers. Uh, they go up river, up the water, not down the stream. Uh, the duck itself uh, will eat its food out in the ocean in the rough waters. Uh, in order to do this, the bird must be strong and, use, and, and be used to hard work. And to make this happen, the mother will have her chicks follow her up the stream uh, through numerous, numerous training exercises. 
Uh, she does this multiple times. And later, she brings them through harder and harder circumstances until they're ready to go into the open, deep waters. In much the same way, the Lord has prepared us for such a life of faith. The Lord has shown me time and time again that he could both hear and answer prayer by his amazing grace and his omnipotent hand. From the first time I first trusted in the Lord until now, the Lord has showed me time and time again that he's faithful and that he can answer prayer. Not too long after I got saved, while I was in the Air Force, I quickly learned how God could answer prayers. I was only saved maybe for a few months. Uh, there was a, um, a squadron uh, thing that we were doing with the, with the orphanage and we were preparing uh, turkeys for, the, for Thanksgiving for them and uh, we had learned that, they were, that, that the kids uh, had uh, what's called an angel tree for Christmas and you would take, uh, they would take the angels off the tree of what they wanted, they wrote down what they wanted and, and each one of us would take one and we were assigned to get one of these kids whatever it is that they had written down for, so that they could have a good Christmas. Uh, Everybody seemed to get all their stuff in and wrapped, except little old me. Uh, me, being the young airman that I was, waited until about Christmas Eve to go Christmas shopping. <laughs> I didn't even look at this angel until I got, until I, I got around Christmas Eve. And, uh, and so I look at this thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this angel, and, I, and, it's, and it's, all it says on it is mini, M-I-N-I, -I, mini. And I'm like, what is a, what is a mini? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm racking my brains. I'm actually looking around the stores to find out, does anybody know what a, Mickey, what a, what a mini is? And uh, so what I find out is what this kid really wanted was a, a little RC remote control car about that big, a Mini Cooper. And, uh, and there were all kinds of different ones. There were Corvettes. There was, you know, Dodge Chargers. There were all these really nice, but there were no Mini Coopers. The row with the Mini Cooper was out. All the other ones were stocked full. <laughs> uh, it was one of those Christmases, amen? And so, uh, so I, I, I prayed. I, I was still a brand new believer. I'd, I'd never prayed really hardly in my life, but I prayed. And I, I just talked to God, and I said, God, this kid, this kid, this is an orphan, and he wants a Mini Cooper. And I promised him I would get him a Mini Cooper, and I was too stupid to wait until Christmas Eve, and now I need some help, Lord. And so I'm walking around the store, and I see this, uh, I see all these other big cars. I mean, they're, they're about this big, these, these remote control cars. And I see one, a Mini Cooper about this big. And these, these, they were about $175, $200, something like that. I said, I cannot afford that. I only had about $63 in my bank account. That's all I had for the whole week to get gas and food and everything. And, uh, and I, I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but I looked at this uh, Mini Cooper, and there was no price tag on it. So I said... Well, let me just take it to the counter and see how much it is, just, just for laughs. And so I bring it to the counter, and the lady's like, well, I, I can't scan it. I, it's not in our system. They must have put it out there without putting a price on it. Uh, you're going to have to take it somewhere else uh, to the, to the um, help desk or whatever it is. And so I, I take it to the help desk, and I, I, I talk to the lady, and She's like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. And I said, look, lady, this is Christmas Eve, and I need this car. <laughs> uh, uh, she, was, she, was, she was like, well, make me an offer. I said, well, 25 bucks, you know. Uh, she was like, well, I can't go that low, but how about, how about $60? I said, you got a deal. And so I was able to get some wrapping paper, and I, was able, I spent everything I had to get that thing. As I went outside, I said, God, I don't have anything left. Can you please give it back to me? So I got to the, uh, 
to the car. I got home. And when I went home, I had all this stuff in my hand, you know. And I opened up the mailbox, uh, like I always do, and I checked the mail. And there was, a, there was a, a thing from USAA in there. So I go in, I open it up, and it was a check for $60, $63.88, I think it was. Everything that I had spent. I just said, thank you, God. I knew then that God could hear it. God could hear my prayers. And that God was real. Since then, I could tell you story after story about how God has answered my prayer. For the sake of time, I'm just going to talk to you about our call to Alaska. And then I'm going to talk to you about what happened here. Um, most of you were here, but some of you weren't. 2016, uh, God called us to Alaska. Now, the story behind that was kind of a long story, and I'm, I'm going to have to shorten it up. <laughs> um, for, a, for a while, I thought maybe God wanted me to be a, a Navy chaplain, so I spent four years in the Navy after Bible college and the Navy Reserves um, looking to see if maybe God wanted me to be a chaplain in the Navy. And God never opened that door. I, I mean, I was able to reach people, but you know what? God wasn't, God never gave me peace, and he never opened the door. And I, and I said, you know what, Lord? If that's your will, then I'll get out of the Navy Reserves. So I got out of the Navy Reserves. For two years, I didn't hear anything from God about what God wanted me to do in my ministry. We'd have, min, we'd have uh, mi, uh, missionaries come through this church presenting their burdens on the screens and, and uh, talk, you know, on the big screen we, we used to have and uh, talking about how God has touched their heart to go reach this and that. And, and I'm, I'm looking at that and I, no, nothing, no feeling whatsoever. And I thought for, after a couple of years of this, I said, God, is my heart hard? Do I not love people? And I got to that point where I cried out to God. And I said, Lord, if it's your will for me to stay here and work and earn money and just give to missionaries who are actually going out in the field, I will do that. And so one Sunday, that next Sunday, I... Um, I came to church with the intentions of talking to Pastor Gritton about turning in my ordination papers and saying, I'm, I'm just going to just stay here and work, and that's it. I don't need ordination papers anymore. I'm not going to be in that kind of a ministry. Before I could even reach him, Brother Schulenberg approaches me and says, Hey, Brother Manny, I got, I got a question for you. Would you be willing to go to Alaska for a month and a half and preach for me? I said, brother, that is a tall order. I've never been to Alaska. I don't know anybody in Alaska, and that's a long way, and I hate planes. And I, and I said, besides which, I have, a, I have work. I don't know if I can get away for a month and a half. But he said, will you please pray, pray about it because the pastor up there needs somebody to take over. I know, he doesn't know you. You don't know him. But I think you would be a good fit. And so I, talk, I, I prayed about it for a couple of weeks. I, I talked with the pastor that was up there in Big Lake. And we, we, we talked for a little bit. And uh, we prayed about it. And he, he asked me, he said, do you have any messages that you preach? I said, yeah. He said, can you email me one? I said, yeah. So he, I emailed him a sermon. And he said, um, you're the man that we need up here. You would be just right for our church. So, by faith, I, uh, I went up uh, to Alaska for a month and a half with my wife. I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, we're, we, have, we both have jobs. We don't need any money. We, we're expecting our paycheck. Don't worry. We, we just want to be a blessing to you guys. We're up here to minister. Don't worry about paying us anything. Just, it'll be fine. And we agreed. He said, okay. Well, about two weeks into me being up there, 
and this was in the middle of the month, uh, both of us, me and Marla, found ourselves without work. Uh, I was fired without notice, without just completely against our contract, completely, he wouldn't even answer the phone, turned off my emails, nothing. I, I, I couldn't get anything. And, uh, and I find out uh, from my mom about what happened. And I was angry. I, I'm not going to lie, I was angry. And I wrote a big, long letter to the Department of Business about it. And I get to the, I get to the Big Lake Post Office, have it all sealed up, stamped, ready to go, and I get ready to put it into the mailbox, and God smote my heart. And he said, don't you mail that. I turn around. I go back into the car. I said, Marla, I couldn't do it. God wouldn't let me. And so we prayed. We said, God, you brought us up here. You're going to have to provide for us. We have nothing but you. Before you know it, that week, we, expect, we got unexpected love offerings from the church, $1,200. Next, next week, $900. Next week, $1,300. I mean, every week we were getting these gigantic love offerings we weren't even expecting. Marla gets a text right, right, as, right within a day or so of, of us praying. She gets a text from somebody uh, here in Punta Gorda that she hasn't talked to in a long time. And she, she texts her and she says, um, uh, I haven't heard from you in a long time. By the way, do you need a job? <laughs> She's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so she says, put your application in right away. We, we want you. We need you. And so um, she puts her application in. And um, she, a, a week goes by. We haven't heard from anything. Nothing. And so uh, Mar we're like, well, God, we thought this was your will. Lord, if, this is, if, if it's your will, then, then show us something. Help us. We, you know, it's been a week. You know, maybe, maybe this wasn't your will. Right after we prayed that, she gets another text from another person at a different bank who says, hey, uh, how you doing? I haven't heard from you in a long time. By the way, do you need a job? <laughs> Same message, different person. You see, when we prayed, God heard our prayer in Alaska, and I guess it's 3,500 miles away. God touched the heart of two different people to, to contact Marla about a job. By the time we left Alaska, I had two and a half months worth of all of our bills, rent, bills, everything paid for two and a half months while she had a top paying job at, at a great bank uh, and they were like promoting her like every month, like giving her a raise every month. We want to give you a raise. We want to give you a raise. And within six months, now we, now we scrimped and scraped for six months, but after six months I was able to take her to Olive Garden and says, and we, we were able to actually go on, our, go on a date after six months. God is good. God put it on our hearts to go back to, to, to Alaska as missionaries while we were up there. We were driving over the Eagle River Bridge, and, uh, and I, I said, Marla, I think God is... I think God is uh, calling me back up here to be a missionary. She says, he's been speaking to my heart about the same thing. And so we both surrendered to come, go back up as missionaries. Now, we came back, and four years goes by, and we're still on deputation, working full-time jobs, trying to make ends meet. And uh, God taught me a lot of lessons about prayer within this, those four years. If I wasn't here... There, were, there would be a lot of people that, that God blessed me so much while I was here. So much. Um, he did it so I could be a blessing to others. 
God allowed me to establish my own property management company, which I ended up, my mom got fired from the same guy two years later. And I, and I was able to give her my, my, my business, and she did better than, than I ever did. <laughs> and, uh, and, and during that time, God allowed me to be a, a community association manager for Sunshine Villas, and, and God used that in Dominic's life, where I, I was able to give that business to Dominic. And, and, and God has blessed Dominic through that. You see, dur during all that time, there were so many different lessons on prayer that God, and, and, and faith that God had to bring me through to trust him before I could even get up there. Before I could even go, I had to learn a lot of lessons on faith because my faith wasn't yet made perfect. Now, we decided to go up by faith with a third of our support. And there, there are a few stories about that one, about the miracles on that one. The, the week before we, we, we were supposed to fly out, we got a call from, from a, a pastor we never met in South Carolina, and he said, hey, I heard about you guys, and I, I want you to come up and preach for us. And I said, Pastor, we're, we're flying out next week. And he said, I don't care, come on up. And we, we go up there, and uh, I, I preach, and every, he's like, all right, you guys, you heard him preach. You want to you wanna, you wanna be our missionary? And everybody's like, yeah. And so they voted me in as a missionary, and I got support right, right there, right before. And, and there, there was a lesson in prayer on that one that I had to learn. And, you know, we decided to go up by faith with a third of our support to Alaska, and we said, you know what, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm going to go to Alaska. God wants us up in Alaska, and we're going to go to Alaska as missionaries. So we go up, and our, our agreement was to spend a year learning ministry with a veteran missionary pastor, and we did. We joined Mana Baptist Church. Wonderful church, much, much like this. The pastor knows the deacon over there. Uh, brother P brother P uh, Penny, excuse me, um, and uh, he was a member of your father's church, wasn't he? Yep. And um, so we we instantly fell in love with the church and the people, and we learned a lot. While we were there, we talked about starting a church in Eagle River. In fact, I I talked to four different pastors and, and a missionary that actually tried to start a church in Eagle River, a good man of God. If I said his name, you'd probably know him. All of them said the same thing. Starting a church in Eagle River is tough. It'll either make you or break you. If, if, you, if you start a church, you're probably not going to get a lot of people over there. People just are hard-hearted over there. Many people have tried. And so I said, well, the fact is, is God wants me to start a church in Eagle River, and I'm going to do it by faith. So I, I was, uh, at the time, I was a Department of Corrections chaplain running an addictions ministry, and the chaplains, I was talking to them, and they're like, well, you know, why don't you start a, why don't you rent a building or something? I said, no, God, we're praying that God would give us a building, and we're going we're gonna to pray it in and let God give us a building. So uh, one day, he, uh, a few months goes by, and he, he says, Hey, uh, Chaplain Fernandez, uh, do, you, do you think you'd need chairs for your, for your building? I said, Yeah. And, uh, and, he, and he, sa he says, Well, let me give you all these chairs. So he gives me like 46 nice chairs, sort of like the blue ones you got in there, only green. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I said, I'll take them. I'll put them in my, my garage. And he, and he says, um, well, what are you going to do with these? And I said, well, if God is giving us chairs, he, he's going to give us a building to put these chairs in. And those were my exact words. And, uh, and, he, and, and he says, well, I, I'll pray for you, brother. And I, I said, thank you, I, I could use it. And so uh, 11 months after we started our church, well, let me, let me just, eight months goes by, nine, nine months Nine months goes by, and I'm talking to uh, the base chaplain on, on uh, the, the, Air, the Army Air Force Base, 
because we're trying to establish a military uh, ministry there. And we were talking about how we could help the, the, the military. And uh, he said, well, where are you guys meeting? And I said, well, we're meeting in a community room right now just on Sunday mornings. Uh, and uh, we're, we're meeting in the heart of Eagle River, right in the same building where the library is. And uh, he said, well, why don't you just rent a storefront? And I said, no. I said, chaplain, we've been praying. We've been praying that God would give us a building, and we just believe that God would give us a building. So uh, we, I get done talking to him, and uh, I'm doing my thing, and there, there comes a point where we're just not seeing people come to the church. We've, we've been there, and I'm getting discouraged, and I'm saying, Lord, please do something. We're not seeing people come to the church. We're, we're, we're getting stragglers come in, and, and it doesn't matter how many doors we knock on. doesn't matter how many people we talk to. Nobody's coming. Lord, please. Lord, and I just cried out to God. And that, that week, that week, uh, some other things happened, but that week, um, I, get a, I come home, and I get a message on my phone. And um, the message goes something like this. Uh, Brother Fernandez, uh, I, I need to talk to you. I need you to call me back. Uh, we were wanting to donate our building to you and, all, and everything that we have. We want to donate everything to, you, to, your, to your church. And me and Marla, we just worship God. Thank you, God. I mean, we didn't go all over town saying, hey, will you give us our building? Will you? No, we didn't do that. We just prayed. And we just said, God, give us a building. We know you can do it. And everybody's telling us to rent, but we're not going to rent. We're just going we're, we're just, we're just to trust that you're going to give us a building. God gave us a building. Amen. Pastor Carden from Man of Baptist, they, they, it read it this, the same week. We, normally it takes about 45 days to close on a building. 30, if you're lucky. It took us two weeks to close on the building. They donated the building at $123,500 in, in liquid assets. Amen. And all of the furniture and things that you saw in there. If, if that don't make you want to shout, there ain't no Baptist in you. Amen? You're all a bunch of Catholics in here. Amen? I mean, God is good. Amen? So, uh, so we're, um, we close on, during that week, during those two weeks, we normally, normally there's a men's meeting that happens in Sutton, which is, it's at a Bible camp, a big, it's at a big camp, big campgrounds, beautiful campgrounds. Normally I go to that, it's a big men's meeting. And a uh, big uh, campground filled with just nothing but stinky men. Amen? <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't go because of what was happening. And Pastor Carden addresses all the men, and all the men were talking about, you know, their ministries and what they were doing and how they were trying to raise funds and, you know, stuff like that. And Pastor Carden gets up there and he says, I uh, just want to let you guys know that uh, uh, God gave Manny a building. And they all looked. What? And Pastor Carden says, God gave Manny a building. Isn't that nice? And they're like, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. And it's just like, it's just, a, just a blessing and just an encouragement to, to everybody to, to let them know that God still listens to prayer. Amen. And, um, and so, uh, you know, the, the, the week we were going to start the church in the first place, May 7, 2023, the week that we were going to start the church, we didn't have a, a piano or, or any kind of a keyboard, and we were praying. We were praying for a keyboard. We were praying for hymn books. We were praying for uh, what else did I? What else were we praying for? We were praying for a piano player. Okay, and uh, I thought we were praying for something else. But we were praying for a keyboard, 
hymn books, and a piano player. The day before we decided to launch our first service, I get a call. Hey, Brother Manny, I was just wondering, do you guys, do you guys have a keyboard? Uh, well, no. Well, I, I got one. Just, just wait. I'll, I'm going to bring one tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, I, you guys need hymn books? Well, yeah. Well, I'm going to bring a bunch of hymn books tomorrow. And, 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 and his, his daughters played piano, and, and we just, you know, for, for the better part of the year, they, they stayed faithful. I mean, even though they lived way far away, they stayed faithful, come in every Sunday morning to come to church and helped us with, with services. God is a God that can hear prayer. Those were things that we specifically prayed for. And the day before we launch out, listen, you know when the, when, the, when the priests and the Levites were crossing the River Jordan, God didn't work until they put their foot in the water. And I, I, just, I just believe that if we get our feet wet, God will, God will do something. Amen? Now let's, let's go back to... Uh, Isaiah 61, Isaiah chapter 60 again in verse 21 and 22. Here the Bible says in verse 21, Thy people also shall be all righteous. That's saved people. Amen. They shall inherit the land forever. That's Saved and sure. Amen. The branch of my planting. The work of my hands. That I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one a strong nation. You know what that is? That's, that's lost sinners getting on fire for God. And going soul winning. I the Lord will hasten it in his time. You see. God didn't want me to plant a church. You see, God wanted, it wanted, he wanted it to be the branch of his planting. The branch of his planting. He wanted to be the one to plant the church, not me. He wa- Listen, if it was me that would go out and go door knocking and get a, a, a hundred people to come to my church, hey, maybe I can get some glory for that, but I can guarantee you that God, The only person that's going to get glory for this church is God. He purposely withheld people from my church for the better part of a year. So that I would not be tempted to rent a building and get stuck in a three to five year contract. So that he could give me something much better. So that he can answer our prayers. And I just believe that, that, the, that if God's going to give us a building, he's going to give us the people that are going to come in that building. And, and I believe that, that this is going to be a work of his grace, and it's going to be done in his time. I'm so, listen, missionaries have a real hard time because they've got to write newsletters, and they've got to try to make it exciting even though nothing's going on. <laughs> hey, man? And sometimes missionaries, even some that I've met, are tempted to lie on their uh, about how many people. Listen, if you if you hand me a missionary letter that says a thousand people got saved uh, and ten thousand are getting saved, I am not going to believe it. Okay, throw that in the garbage. Because if, you're, if all you're doing is telling 10,000 people to raise their hand, then nobody's getting saved. But, listen, if I can go door knocking, and, and we saw two people get saved just before we, we came. But, hey, the, the church has to be closed. I'm losing momentum. Every, every minute that door is closed, those doors are closed for construction, I'm losing momentum. I, I, we don't have a baptistry yet. I need, to, I need to, as soon as I can get them in church, I want to get them baptized. Amen? And it's not like you could just go into Alaska and go and jump in a lake. <laughs> Amen? You might be able to go, get away with that in Florida, but you can't do that over here. Amen? And you might want to try a pool instead of a lake because there's some gators out here. Amen? 
But what am I saying? I'm saying uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. You know, if our church has any testimony, any testimony at all, let it be that God is alive. Let it be that his house is a house of prayer. You want to know why Sunday night I have an at-the-altar prayer meeting and on Wednesday night I have an upper room prayer meeting and that's literally all we do is pray? Because I believe in prayer. I believe that if we don't do that, that church will never grow. You see, I don't know who I'm speaking to in here today. Listen, if God has led you to be a missionary, and maybe somebody in, in Facebook land or radio land is listening to this, uh, if God has led you to be a missionary, I need, you need to know this, that a life of faith doesn't just happen overnight. You, you have to learn where you're, wherever you're at how to get a hold of God where, wherever you are. And it's not just because I'm special and that God only listens to me because I'm some special guy. I can guarantee you I don't know why God answers my prayers. I'm just as sinful and wicked. I don't know how God even hears my prayers. Amen? But everybody in here, has. if, if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit indwelling in your heart, and that Holy Spirit can take your prayers up to God. And he can, he can hear your prayer. Listen, if you've never experienced that, you are missing out. You, if you've never given God an opportunity to... You want to know why I don't use canned music in, in the church? We, we, I have a strict rule. I do not use canned music in the church. I don't, I don't get a, a digital hymn player, and I, don't, I do not play digital hymns and then sing lead songs to digital... I don't do that. Because we're praying for another piano player to come, to come in. And how am I going to sit there and tell God, Lord, I'm going, to, I, I'm going to pray that you're going to give us a piano player and then go behind his back and then start playing canned music? How does God get the glory for that? How am I giving God the opportunity to answer that prayer? You see, I just need to believe by faith that he's going to do it. I've gotten to a point to where I know that, that I, can, I can pray for anything that is in God's will, and I know he's able to do it whenever it is his time. And yes, sometimes it can be discouraging because sometimes there's a big waiting period. You're in the waiting room of prayer. But you know, the result is so good. Therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto thee. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You want to know what happens when God answers your prayer? It encourages you to pray again. It builds your faith. And it helps you to, to know that whatever it is that you're going through, God can take you through it. And that God is on the throne. And that God is alive. And that no matter what happens, God can take care of you. I don't know who I'm talking to in here tonight, but if you've never experienced God's grace in answer to prayer, you need to start getting a hold of God right now. And give God the glory and stop working in the power of your own flesh and, and stop relying on yourself and start relying on God because he can do it. He can do all things. And I'm so grateful. Listen, I'm so grateful for what God has done in my life. And I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that if, if you need help in this area with prayer, I, I hope to just be an encouragement to you today. And if you're not saved, God's not going to hear any of your prayers until he hears the, the one prayer, the prayer of faith. 
Don't sit there and tell me that, that you're going to reject Jesus Christ and then pray to God for him to bless you. You need to pray the prayer of faith and say, Lord, save me. I, I, I humbly come to you in, in faith. I repent of my sins. I realize that I'm going to go to hell without you. Lord, save me. If you've never done that, you are in direct rebellion to God and you are on your way to hell and you need, you need to get right with God tonight. Don't wait. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Don't wait for God. To, to, if God is moving on your heart now, don't, don't say, like Felix, I'll wait for a more convenient time. Because there will never be a more convenient time than there is now. Don't wait. You could die right now. People get into a car wreck. Some of our teens just got into a car wreck. Today. Before church. Don't wait. Get saved before it's too late. Thank you.